Oh, Misha. Uh, you know, you're going from one top prospect to another in Jim Crew. What are your thoughts on how the UFC has been matchmaking? I mean, you know, those are tough match, match, the matches and stuff, but that's UFC, you know, and I want to be at the top, so by winning this kind of fights, it puts me back into those, you know, bigger fights and uh, more opportunities for the future, pulling out bigger names and etc. So, you know, yes, he is undefeated, but I fought undefeated guys before. You've had about six months since that last fight, uh, UFC 235. What kind of changes you had to make, have been able to make during this time? Um, I got about 30% stronger physically. Um, more cardio, more sparring, just better preparation in Las Vegas. Um, just I've been doing whatever I possibly can the whole entire summer. I didn't go anywhere, just home gym, home gym. And, uh, you know, that's all I've been doing. So I feel really good. I feel really ready. I just uh, I just can't wait and show it. I, I say so, yes. What do you mean? Like, how did you do that? Some, some, some secrets. <laughs> some secrets right there, you know? You have been training in Extreme Couture. You've been there for a while now. How, how much better do you think you've been since, since relocating to Vegas? This is definitely my, my uh, best version of myself. Yeah. Um, I've been there for like one year training with all the high-level fighters and I feel like that slowly everything coming together you know MMA is a very ruthless game it's unforgiving so in order to be good in order to win you have to be obsessed with training and just the whole entire you know MMA and I feel like for last I'd say four months I've been obsessed and I feel like I do really, really good inspiring with all the top guys. And all I had to do, I just had to do it under the bright lights, you know, where before it used to face me, where now I just, I don't care, you know. I just, I feel better mentally too, you know. Uh, Misha, those really look like traditional hand wraps there. I think you have a duct tape job going. Have you been walking around with that all day or what's I uh, know, just um, sometimes I wear duct tape instead of tape, you know, just to support the wrists and uh, it's a better job does a better job supporting wrists than traditional boxing wraps. It's more of a cast, it's more of a solid. There's no movements, because I've been hitting harder. I just I don't want to ruin my hands. You, you can't know? do that fight again. Unfortunately not, <laughs> but they have amazing uh, guys that take the hands and all that stuff, so I'm not worried about that. You see your wife here with you. She's been through a lot of health issues, uh, cancer and everything. Uh, how much inspiration do you draw from her heading into a big fight like this? Oh, you know, it's very inspiring. You know, she beat, she finished uh, her cancer treatments. She beat the cancer. We we're super happy, and it's almost like huge weight came off my shoulders as well. You know, sometimes you think those things don't bother you. Uh, they motivated certain people. You know, it was really a rough time in my life, but now I feel like it's over, and uh, I'm back, and uh, I'm just very excited to be here. And I want to show it to all you guys what I've been working on. And I'll show you why I belong here in the top 15. And that's why I'm here. Misha, you talked about the sort of obsession you have to have as a fighter. How hard was it to have that obsession with your training and your fights while also being that supporter? You know, it's a good question. Um, in order to get good at something, you have to fall in love with it. If you're uh, not fully in love with it, you'll never be great at it, you know? So I just kind of took a smaller steps. I break down my training. I scheduled my own um, schedule. I stick to the schedule. Um, and just, I've been watching a lot of uh, motivational uh, talkers, the, some, some of the fighters, from, that come from some of the fighters. And just, you know, I was kind of like trying to be, not do too much work in the beginning. Little bit, little bit, little bit, just get into it. And then once I got better, I was more hungry for the results. And once I was doing good against certain guys in sparring, I've seen that I'm doing better, so that motivated me even more to obsession level, where some days I would go and train three times a day, and um, that, that like really like helped me, you know? Last one for me, uh, statistically, from what I've seen, you have an advantage on the chef here. What do you think is the biggest challenge that he possesses? That he possesses? Yeah. Uh, first of all, he's undefeated. He doesn't really know how to lose. 
Um, even though you know he's younger than me, but you know he's still explosive. He's still strong. He's still growing. And at that age, um, with 10 and 0, you know he doesn't know how to lose. And he's stream and he's here to. Be, he wants to be a champion too, right? So he still brings a lot of threat. You know, I know I have more experience overall by breaking down each kind of like art, but you know, you guys all know in MMA it doesn't really matter. You know, in MMA it's all about. You know, sometimes it's all about even how you wake up that day, how you're feeling that day in particular, you know. In training, yeah, you can beat everybody, but how well can you perform under the pressure, under all these lights, under all this public, you know. And that's something that I've been actually working on. I've been doing some tricks to uh, kind of like uh, simulate all this, you know, at home. Can you explain what some of those tricks are? Or is that a secret? Uh, well, this one, this trick I was doing with the virtual reality. Yeah, so I've been in like big crowds, <laughs> you know. It's better than putting like microphones in your bathroom or something, trying to see like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I actually put the helmet and I'm, I see all these crowds. I'm in a world championships boxing rings and, you know, and now it doesn't phase me at all. So, before it did. In your last five fights, having gone past the first round, do you see a similar fade with Jim? Um, you know what? I don't know. We'll see. Um, it, 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 it's gonna be interesting because I know he likes to throw, you know, I'm gonna come out throwing. I don't know, I don't know. If we survive that first round, then most likely, yeah, we're gonna go to the third. But I still kind of think he's gonna finish in the first. Yeah. Nisha, just one more for me. Uh, fighters always looking for new interesting ways to help improve their game. Is virtual reality something you can see making its way to the MMA market eventually? You see it being used in hospitals and clinics and children. It's just a matter of time. It's a great question, you know. It's just a matter of time. Um, there's such a huge future with the virtual reality. I think that, you know, like, there's so many crazy games that when I play, like, for example, a great boxing game, I'm actually number one ranked right now in the world for, like, uh, the punching stats at uh, one of the sessions there. Um, it's just half an hour putting the helmet on, putting like uh, wrist weights and doing some like movement and doing some like boxing game. I'm completely drenched. I'm so sweaty and at the same time so excited. I want to play more, but it's almost like I gotta turn the AC on and all the fans on and bring a towel before I can continue playing, you know? So there's a huge uh, future and opportunity in terms of learning because everything can be in 3D. So even just going over technique, it could be really, really interesting, you know? First person shooter. By my favorite is boxing games. Boxing games are amazing. You can actually play online against somebody who is there boxing with you, you know? It's really, really cool. Really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks.